everyone thank you for joining me for another of the distress ink and oxide color combination videos and today we're looking at old paper so we're now going into the o's now i'm working through each of the distress oxide colors alphabetically so as you can imagine getting into the o's it's, it's quite a chunk through the alphabet i'm really excited to get towards the end so that you've got an entire library of color videos to go and watch now within each video we're going to swatch the color to see how true it is to the label and as you'd expect and then we're going to have a look at it and compare it to other colors within the distress oxide range and i'm going to provide you with two color combinations using other oxides that you can go away and try at home so the first thing i'm going to do is swatch this now don't forget if you like any of the products that I'm using here, whether it be the ink pads, whether you like the uh, the labels that I have on my brushes and my um, my pads, or the colour chart, the clear blending mats, the brush, whatever it may be, if you like any of the items, they're all linked down below for you. So old paper is a bit, what I consider a bit of an unusual one, because the label clearly shows that it's a kind of a very pale green almost like a a bit like bundled sage in fact i'm just going to grab the bundled sage um ink pad for you just so you can see how similar they really are when they're sat together so i always find it strange that my old paper uh, when it's put into a color chart is always near the browns and the uh, creamy colors but when you blend it as you can see it's not that green at all. Now the ink pad is uh, quite similar to the color when it's blended, but let's put the lid on and you'll see that actually it's a lot more yellow than the label shows. So uh, the label shows, like I say, quite green, but I think this is definitely more of a creamy uh, ivory sort of color. It does have a green undertone. I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give it that, but I don't think it's got that much green in it at all really. So let's just clean this up. I'll just give that a white ready for when we do our color combinations in a moment and while i'm doing this if you're new to my channel and you love distress inks and oxides and everything ink blending please do uh, hit the subscribe button because i have lots and lots of other video ideas coming up once we've finished this series as well now let's take a look at the rest of the colors in the range so if we go to first of all the yellows and the greens because as i say it does have a green tone on the label and let's just check so uh coming through so squeeze lemonade it's a bit more creamy so when you put, put it against greens you can kind of see um why they've put green on the label it's not it's not too too dissimilar to crushed olive maybe crushed olive is a much darker version but i think that that it's quite similar there and shabby shutters ever so slightly uh, we came down to bundled sage that's the label i showed you where it looks very similar uh, but actually bundled sage is much greener um, so i think if you were doing this you could potentially use please do excuse the noises today everyone i've got all sorts of workmen outside and i just can't can't hold off doing these videos for you any longer um crushed olive i think you could use crushed olive uh, in these combinations maybe for a slightly more green hue now let's go to the back of these um, are kind of in rainbow colors and let's take a look so this is old paper if I just lift these up for you so you can see it a bit clearer this is old paper um, when you see it like this you think that there's no green in there at all really is there uh, along the browns it's definitely one of the paler browns but I do think antique linen stands reasonably closely. So antique linen being a creamy color, a yellowy creamy color, and I think that's not too far off. So I think of all of them, antique linen is probably going to be your closest match, followed quite closely then by some of the paler greens. So that is looking at that color alongside all of the other Distress Oxide colours. Now let's get into these combinations. Now I've got two combinations for you and given the nature of old paper, being that it is quite a neutral colour, I thought I could go anywhere with this, but I've chosen to actually give you two, uh, three colour combinations. And the reason being is because very often, say I'm doing a, um, I don't know, a green, a, a proper green, I could go one side yellow, the other side blue quite nicely. When you're working with a neutral like this, it's very hard to match two colors either side of it. So you kind of want this to be like the lighter end and then you go into darker colors. And I think this one's definitely sort of warmer shades with this one. So I found it hard to 
get some good four color combinations for you. So I've actually got two, three color combinations and I just thought, do you know what, if that's what works, that's what we will do. So we're going to go for, again, a continuing with a kind of neutral-ish uh, color combination here first of all and we're going to go into tea dye which is a very pale almost like a pale cocoa color really lovely it does actually remind me of tea of course maybe a little more orange than I would have my tea but not too far off and I'm just going to blend the two together now this has probably dried a little bit while I've been chatting so I'm going to add a little more ink to that and get this blend going nicely between the two. There we go. So we've got the uh, old paper into tea dye. Let's just wipe off this excess here. And then I'm going to go with a nice pop of colour into Rusty Hinge. But this should blend really beautifully together, these two. I mean, look how bright that is. I do love Rusty Hinge. Really, really love that. And let's just take tea dye just to work along this blend line. Small circles always, no big swipes, otherwise we're dragging the color into the next. So there's a nice color combination for you uh, that you could use and it they just don't, they just work beautifully together. So you can see why maybe I didn't want to add a fourth color because I just think they work nicely as a subtle ombre there. So that's Rusty Hinge, Tea Dye and then into Old Paper. But let's find another combination for you. So give this a good wipe. Now if you're not sure why I always dry my mat thoroughly, uh, it's because distress oxides are reactive with water. And if you want uh, a deeper explanation of this, you can check out my video on my channel and that talks you through, it's called, um, it's something to do with the differences between oxides and inks. I'm not sure on the title exactly, but I will link that here for you. Um, but that's going to explain how you can use the water reactive properties with distress inks and distress oxides. So um, definitely go and check that out. Now, when I first put this down again, I'm thinking that's quite green there for a moment and then it kind of dries more to the creamy color. So I thought what one color combination I really love is greens and pinks together. But I didn't want to go with a bright pink um, particularly as this does dry to almost an ivory colour. So I've gone for Victorian Velvet next. It's a slightly more, I suppose you'd call it a dusky pink. So I'm going to work into this. Which look at this, just they just go beautifully. Let's bring that quite a way up. And then down a little bit into the old paper and then vice versa. Let's bring the old paper up into the Victorian Velvet. We've got a really, really nice blend line there. I love when the two colors don't mix, they don't create a different color. Instead, they just really subtly blend from one into the other nicely. So there's one. And don't forget everybody, if you love some of these combinations, but there's a particular color in there you're not so keen on, you can absolutely just take part of the combination. So if you wanted to create a background that was just these two colors, go ahead do that and I'd love to see the results and uh, the projects that you make with them. And then I'm going to go lastly into aged mahogany on the end which again is a lovely bright pop of colour um, but it's really a darker version of Victorian velvet in a way. So they sit really closely together I think, just one's much darker than the other. And there we go, so they do blend nicely together. And there we go. Perfect. So then we've got those three. Now that's a bit, you can see the shine as I hold it at certain lights. It's still got to dry, but when it dries, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So that was aged mahogany at the top into Victorian velvet and then into the colour that we're looking at today, which is old paper. So there's two new colour combinations for you and hopefully a better look at old paper Distress Oxide. I hope you love this colour. I think it's very versatile. You could work it into lots of different colours and tones and shades, but um, hopefully it's given you some inspiration to get it out and start using it. Uh, don't forget everything I've used is linked down in the description below. And if you could give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe if you haven't already, that would really make my day. Thank you everybody. Take care. I'll see you again very soon.